G'day guys, welcome to Life on the Hulls. Last week's episode, I uh, manhandled the forward head module. It weighs about 80 kilos. It's not the weight of it, it's actually the shape of the thing. It's like a giant wedge that fits down in that forward compartment there. This week, I'm gonna cut a hole in that door and I'm gonna work on the tabbing behind there to make all that really structural. Now, a lot of you made a comment, and I really appreciate all the comments, guys. Every week, I get so many comments. It was in the hundreds this week about how I've got to look after my back. I don't want to pull a hernia, I don't want to uh, do a shoulder in, and, and my knees. The, I think your favorite comments that I get are about my knees. It's like, you gotta get knee pads, you idiot. But you know, at the end of the day, I do a lot of physical lifting and a lot of work in this mold, and, uh, and you know, the hard, hard work that goes on in here certainly gives me some grief when I get home. And I usually go home and uh, have a long hot shower and try to stretch it out. But at Christmas, I don't know whether you remember back in my Christmas issue, I'll just put some vision here of Sam, my son, uh, handing out a gift that was so popular and everyone wanted one. In fact, I think we've all got one now, but it was this thing that was handed out. It was the good gun. And, uh, and you know, Sam bought me, he, he actually bought me one for Christmas and uh, he and his girlfriend, Veronica, couldn't have hit the nail on the head more for an old foal like me building a boat. This thing is basically a massage gun. It is wonderful. I'll, I'll tell you what, if you're a guy that suffers from um, you know, any sort of aches and pains, this thing, especially while we're in lockdown, can uh, change your whole outlook. It's got a, a touch screen on the back and essentially you can get into these, oh, oh God, today's been a beast get into these knots that uh, that we all have, and there's no denying it, we've all got them, and uh, and you can really work them out, and there's a number of attachments. Oh, it's just wonderful. Sorry if I just go into a little bit of a, a little bit of a daisy while I uh, work out this bugger I've got in my neck, but probably the best thing anyone has ever bought me. Now, full disclosure here, Sam's girlfriend is actually the Australian distributor for these, and she owns the good gun worldwide, her and a partner, her and a business partner, and, uh, and I'm here to try to give them a bit of a boost. So if you like this thing, get yourself one. Honestly, it's an hour a day for me. I go home and I'm into it. And, and you know, I attribute my ability to be able to get up in the morning without too many aches and pains by that stretching and the good gun. I love it. Get yourself one. It'll change your life. This is the business, this thing. The good gun. There it is. Get yourself a good gun. Let's get in some boat building. Okay, so that's gonna be my position for probably a week or so while I sort out um, uh, there's gonna be a through hole down here, which fortunately I'm already back to solid glass there, so I'm planting that right down in the base down there. And then I need to fill it and tab all the way down here and across and back up. Well, I'm gonna be the first to admit it. Oh, I've got a serious mess here. Um, because I couldn't get to the back of it, I now need to sand back all of this fillet while it's still green which is going to be a bastard of a job, but look at this. It's going to need a, a fair amount of tidy up. Um, luckily over here is a pretty simple fillet. Um, bit of cleaning up needed in there. That, that looks really horrible, that lump there. I'm going to uh, have to grind that right out and then get back to it. I knew that was going to happen uh, due to the, the bulk of stuff that I was putting in there, but wow, it's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of work in here. Probably a couple of hours of good sanding down in this hole. So this forward head compartment without the head unit in it is only very narrow. It's quite uh, quite a challenge down in that uh, down in that hull actually keeping your footing because of the flow coat that I put in uh, some time ago. So what I've done is I basically um, 
I've sort of resigned myself to the fact that I'm going to have to cut a hole in the bulkhead there and provide a door so that I can uh, get ease of access. It's, it's a little bit of a, uh, a tight squeeze and, and honestly climbing over that bulkhead is just getting, uh, getting old very quickly. So I've made an undersized door here and I'm going to have to plunge cut it with a, with a, with a uh, circular saw. I could have jigsawed it out, but I wanted a bit of a neater hole there. I found where I jigsawed it, I tend to not get it quite as neat. But by plunge cutting it, I was able to get a, a reasonable access there. Now that door is a little bit undersized. It's probably about two inches smaller than it would be uh, when I come to actually cut the final hole. If only Janet could see how much vacuuming I do, I don't think you'd believe it because, uh, you know, I don't tend to do it too, too, too much at home, but uh, <laughs> the vacuuming that goes on in this mould is incredible. With all the sawdust and fibreglass dust, I'm pretty much vacuuming two or three times a day when I'm busy. And, uh, you know, it's imperative to keep it clean because you don't want to be breathing this stuff in, even, even uh, you know, the wood, wood dust is not that healthy. So I try to keep it pretty meticulously clean. And the, uh, the mould moving continues and uh, some Sometimes it's a bit more of a struggle. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, you're hitting at the top here and you've got to come in at the bottom. That's it. No, no, you're in the bulkhead. You're in the bulkhead. You'll have to lift up and over. Right on. Whoever invented fiberglass, eh? Hey? What legends? Oh well, man, just been able to crawl through there going to be life changing. Especially when I've got to, to tab all that. Of course. Well, you've got to do all the front bulkhead crash and the works. Yeah, but I can get in there now. Challenging sections that I've done purely because of the the, uh, the position I've been in, but it's done now. I'll give you a look from overhead.
It's Anzac Day. We had a pretty early morning start. Did the dawn service in the driveway today because there's no services anywhere uh, for the first time in well, 100 years actually since the Spanish flu, since they cancelled all the services. But uh, we thought we'll zip out for a quick sail. And uh, you know, we're getting this down pat 20 minutes and we were out here. And, and Janet's, uh, we've got a beautiful little nor'westerly, probably about 15k an hour at the moment. It's just magic out on JB. And, there's not many people out here, yeah, we're losing the wind because we're heading into shore, so we're going to have to tack, so I better stop here for a second. Yeah. So what a difference a couple of years makes, just having this boat on a mooring, and we're about 100 metres from the river mouth uh, into Jervis Bay, and, you know, just being able to zip out for a couple of hours and, and just... You know, soak up some sun in an otherwise um, lockdown environment has been brilliant. In fact, in New South Wales, we weren't restricted like other places have been around the world. We are still able to sail, it was still allowed. And, uh, you know, getting out on Anzac Day for, for us is, uh, it was magic just to soak up the sun and have some, uh, have some nice tacks and, you know, get in a great day out on the water. My uh, old dad, Merv, was a national serviceman in Australia. He never actually saw war, but uh, certainly was involved in the defence effort as a, as a weapon maker uh, at a small arms factory. And, uh, you know, it's a good day for us to remember him. And, uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty amazing to see everybody in the driveways in the morning listening to the bugle of the last post. And uh, yeah, we had a cracker of a day. It was just one of the most magic experiences that day. And then back to our mooring and um, yeah, just a perfect day. got some dolphins again. It's like every time we've come out, we've had dolphins in this yacht. Where are they done? Here they are, oh, I just went underneath, it's right here. There he is, look at it, oh yeah, geez. Hello, dude. Where is he? There, in the water. In the, can't you see him, he's right there. There. Oh, look, they're coming straight at us. Here, hold this. Yeah, I know, I didn't have a mind, but I was thrown inside. Oh, look! Oh, guys! Oh, look at that! Woo! There they are, twin towards us. Yeah. They're feeding. So the rolling boom on our little trailer sail is just fabulous because it keeps the sails out of the weather. We can actually put the boom inside the um, inside the cabin and the and the and the jib that we have as well. And while it's on the mooring, and uh, we generally just pop the bimini up and jump in the water and have a bit of a swim. Now it is the end of April. It's uh, pretty warm our water it's still around 20 degrees celsius and, and while i'm in the water i always give it a quick scrub and that keeps the hull nice and clean i did make the mistake once of leaving it for about four or five months and you know it basically required me to move it out of the water and give it a, a complete scrub down and then a re anti foul so for this uh effort it was pretty well worthwhile just giving it a quick scrub and getting it ready for another sail in a week's time and uh, janet and i had a bit of a swim and that was the end of our day so thanks for joining us guys don't forget to subscribe and uh and uh, certainly give the video a like if you liked it and uh, and yeah hope to see you next week